Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. Political stalemate or systemic breakdown? The standoff consuming the American power elite reflects a country and political culture deeply divided. On the surface, it's about budgets, deficits, and borrowing caps. Go a little deeper, and issues like legitimacy and confidence in institutions can be clearly seen. Is America suffering from a crisis of vision? To Crosstalk America Divided, I'm joined by Patricia De Janeiro in Washington. She's a senior fellow at the World Policy Institute. Also in Washington, we have Alan Lichtman. He is a distinguished professor of history at the American University and author of White Protestant Nation. And in New York, we cross to Didi Banke. She is a GOP strategist and blogger. All right, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want. Patricia, if I can go to you first in Washington. What the hell is going on in the United States? It looks like a replay of the beginning of the Civil War. Agree or disagree? <laughs> well, that, that's one way of putting it. But yeah, I think, you know, we're looking at a Congress right now that really isn't considering the American people at all. They're just considering, you know, their own agenda, which is to, you know, block or stop anything the president wants to do, also confine any reach uh, or, or eliminate a lot of the reach of the government. But I think during the shutdown, they found that they need some of the government. Uh, as they keep defense open and keep other parts of the government open. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think they have to get out of this ideological, you know, standoff and, and back to supporting the U.S. and, and the Americans. Okay. It, Patricia, if I can stay with you, what is the ideological divide then? You said it's ideological. So explain to my audience what that divide is. Well, you know, it's it's pretty. It's this, this idea of being more of a federalist uh, mentality, basically saying that you know we don't need to spend so much money on the government. We don't need the government in our lives. We don't, um, you know, want them to have so many programs and put so much money in, you know, in in helping education or healthcare or any of these. We can do all of these things ourselves. And, you know, and I think what's happening here, unfortunately, is that we're seeing people with a lot of money and power manipulating this kind of idea that they want limited government so they can have more latitude to do, you know, business and take advantage of the employment sector. And, you know, so this is counterproductive for all of us here. Okay, Didi, I have a suspicion you disagree. Go ahead. Yes, I completely disagree. And as far as saying federalist, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I think most Americans do not want the government in their life so much. And you have to understand Obamacare is the most sweeping program and policy uh, maybe ever. And so many Americans, they're poll every day that they don't want it. They don't like it. It's a mess now. They can't even make it work. So, of course, the Republicans are standing strong because they're listening to their constituency because they don't want Obamacare. Okay, good. I'm glad they're fighting for that because I don't on Obamacare yes. either, and it can ruin our economy. We have crushing debt, and yeah. since President Obama has been there, it's been a stalemate in Washington. He is the problem. He's the problem. Alan, is he the problem? Because it looks to me, it looks to me that this is one <laughs> final push, one final push against the New Deal and the Great Society, the last stand. Go ahead, Alan. Yep. You're absolutely right. You know, the, about the Affordable Care Act is not even close to the most sweeping legislation we ever had. It doesn't compare, for example, <laughs> to Social Security or the Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. of 1964. And what's really going on, whatever you think about the Affordable Care Act, it's the law of the land. It went through both houses of Congress, signed by the president, approved by the Supreme Court. And there are constitutional mechanisms, if you want, for repealing or modifying it. But what's going on here is they're trying to use something that has the Republicans that has nothing to do with Obamacare, and that is funding the government and using that to try to extort changes in Obamacare and get around the Constitution. And the remarkable thing here is, number one, the Republican Party claims to be the party of the Constitution. We do nothing that isn't authorized in the Constitution. Where is this authorized in the Constitution? Second, this has nothing to do with limited government. 
the Republicans and conservatives, as I wrote in my book, White Protestant uh, Nation, have nothing to do with limited government. The biggest builder of government in the history of America is the most conservative president, George W. Bush. They just want a different kind of government, one that emphasizes the military, right. the police, restrictions like controls on abortion. That's more restrictive of our personal freedoms than anything the Democrats have contemplated. So this whole thing has got to be seen in the bigger picture. Okay, Patricia, you see, look like you were agreeing, okay? Do you agree or disagree? Because does it have anything to do with yeah, Obama no. or Bush? I'm, this is what I'm getting at. It's a system here. Go ahead, Patricia. Well, yeah, I think it is a system. I mean, the Republicans came into office right after the first election of the president, you know, determined to block and and, and sideline anything that he tried to do. You know, there are plenty of, of, of people here in Washington who can support those allocations. But, you know, this is it. it, it you know, if they care at all about the system and the people, they should do exactly uh, what was just said is is go through the system and go through the legislative process to figure out how they need to change or repeal or or add or or make this law better or this system better and if i could say one more thing look you know if you don't want you know healthcare is one of the most important things in this country and um, people are dying by the thousands because they don't have it and i you know i can't agree with the fact that people don't want it or they want it or they don't want it because we can't tell at this point whether or not that's the case and you know thousands of people are trying to sign up for it now and thousands of people yeah. you know in the country want to have health care and let in and you know, the government is not running this, first of all. And second of all, even if they were, we have TRICARE for the military that's working phenomenally well, and nobody has a problem with that, and the government runs that health care system. Okay, Didi, you know, if it's about Obamacare and about Obama, why doesn't the Republicans support Obamacare? Because it's so bad, it's terrible legislation, let it fail, and in the midterm elections, they'll be swept into power. That's a good strategy if you're a Republican. You well, Peter. A lot of people have that strategy and a lot of people feel that way, but those of us who do not feel that after it's in there and in there solidly, we'll never get rid of it. And we think it'll destroy the economy. There's so many hidden taxes, so many problems. That's why Obama himself, he keeps delaying all these parts of the program because they're bad. They're not working. And the reason for that is because they're afraid they're going to lose the Senate. So what we've got to do as Republicans, we've got to hold off as much as we can, win the Senate and then win back the White House to stop this disastrous policy. Okay, we don't Al, want to be France, or excuse you know, me, we Alan, it looks like to agree the because government. of the crushing debt. It, it looks like the Republicans want to make the issue Obama, but through all of this, Alan, the Republicans have become the problem. That's the perception. Yes. Go ahead. That is the problem. First of all, every time there's a major social change, the right wing claims it's going to destroy the economy. We heard that the Social Security Act is going to destroy the economy. We heard that Medicare is going to destroy the economy. We heard that Medicaid is going to destroy the economy. We heard that the Americans Disability Act is going to destroy the economy. And in fact, after every one of these acts, the economy got a lot stronger. So they're re really crying wolf here. But politically, the Republicans are slitting their own throat because they don't understand history. Every time either party has tried to push a constitutionally dubious means of achieving their ideological agenda against public opinion, it's been disastrous for them. This happened to the Democrats in 1937 when even the great yeah. Franklin Delano Roosevelt couldn't push his court packing scheme through a Democratic Congress and it really hurt the Democrats politically. And of course it happened to the Republicans in 1995-1996 when Newt Gingrich shut down the government and it contributed to the rehabilitation of President Bill Clinton and his reelection. The Republican Party's esteem in the eyes of the American public has fallen to an all time historic low in the Gallup poll. Okay, 28%. Okay, because Didi is a, a GOP strategist, I'd like you to reply to that, Didi. The Republicans looking pretty bad well, right now. I apologize because I only heard. I I mean, everything's cutting out, so I'm not sure exactly what he said, but I will tell you this. I did work for President Bush, and I think you did a fine job. And I think that blaming the Republicans completely is ridiculous. Now, I will give you that, you know, the Republicans and Democrats together are... D.C. is a problem in general. I mean, I think most Americans, when you poll them, that they think that Washington in general... So Republicans get blamed, but they don't get all the blame. That's ridiculous. Obama and 
uh, Boehner and Harry Reid, everyone thinks that they just cannot get along, and right now they can't. We are at a stalemate. What I want to point out, though, is President Clinton was able to reach across the aisle and make it work. So did President Bush, but President Obama is a problem. He will not work with the Republicans. And right now, the American people reject Obamacare. I don't know what polls you're looking at, but people don't like Obamacare. And I'm hoping that when it moves forward and all these problems continue, they're going to say, you know what, forget it. This is the Democrats. And we went back to the Senate, and we can go back to uh, maybe a country that we don't have crushing debt that we cannot sustain. Okay, Patricia, but it, look, it, it looks like to me it that the, de the, de the Republicans ten, can't, can't take the answer yes. That's the perception, at least outside looking in. What answer? What do you mean? I'm going to Patricia here of, of compromise because Obama's all about well, compromise. No, he compromises a... before he even negotiates. It's remarkable. Patricia, go ahead. <laughs> He, yeah, he's compromised quite a bit. I mean, I'd like to go back to, you know, the point The point of us in, in this debt has to do with two wars. It doesn't have to do with affordable health care. And we can't say if this act is working or not, because it hasn't, quite frankly, even started yet. And, uh, you know, and I mean, the Senate has offered to pass, to put a clean bill up for a vote in the House, and the House had agreed to it, and then they turned around and denied it, because, again, they're holding a legal uh, legislation, a law that's already been passed hostage. Now, look, you know, if they don't like this and they don't want to fight it, they have every right to. And I agree 100 percent. Washington is having huge problems, and it's not working very well. Um, and it hasn't been for quite some time, probably since these two wars started and we got a president that people decided they wanted to just block at every stand. But, it, you know, I mean, the bottom line here is that this is you know, this is our country. This is the United States of America. We are Americans. We need to work together to figure this out. We don't need to shut down and punish families, punish people, because we don't like some law that's already been passed. We have systems for this, and we have to decide how to work through those systems and talk to each other and get them done. If if the president doesn't want, want to talk to Congress, why is Congress using that as an excuse not All right, to let me roll jump in here, folks. We're going to go to a short moving. break, and after that. Short break. We'll continue our discussion on America divided. Come back state to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To mind you, we're discussing the political impasse in Washington. Okay, Alan, I'd like to go back to you in Washington. Let's take a look at the Tea Party, because it looks like that's the biggest problem for the Republicans right now. And I'll tell you, I started out by asking the question, of, you know, are we going back to the American Civil War? It would seem to me that there's a small number of people, critical people, that just simply do not recognize the legitimacy of Barack Obama's presidency. Now, this is something tragic in American history, when that starts happening, when you don't recognize the legitimacy of the person in the office, you may not like the person, but you don't even recognize the legitimacy. That's kind of, this is one of the deadlocks in American political culture today. Do you agree or disagree with me? I, I agree with that completely, and, and that's really frightening. That's why you see it's actually a minority within a minority. It's the far right wing or the Tea Party wing of the Republican Party that's really holding our government and perhaps our debt obligations hostage to their own ideology. Whatever you may think of the Affordable Care Act, it has nothing to do with funding the government or meeting our debt obligations. That's why the Democrats can't give in, because then any party mm -hmm. which has control of any part of either house could use the debt ceiling or the funding of the government as a gun to try to shoot down any piece of legislation they don't like. But there is this faction within the Republican Party that they see Obama as a communist. Some even call him the Antichrist. It's that extreme. And they are willing to go around the Constitution, go around their own ideology in order to oppose what they see as the centerpiece of the Obama agenda, the Affordable Care Act. There's another thing going on here. The Republican Party's future is very grim demographically. Their base is white Protestants, as I noted in my book. That is the most shrinking part of the American electorate. The rising part of the electorate is racial and ethnic minorities and the non-religious. So the Republicans' time is numbered, and they're trying to do everything they can with every tactic they have to try to advance their ideological agenda while they still have a modicum of power. We see that in Washington, and we see that in the states with things like voter suppression laws 
with things like extremely restrictive anti-abortion laws. They want to kind of go out like a supernova. Supernova. Didi, you know, what about the appeal of the radical right, the Tea Party uh, folks in Congress here? Because they can't get elected on a national scale. I mean, are they giving up on national politics? Because, I mean, Mitt Romney is the most mediocre Republican you could ever come up with, and he couldn't get elected. And moving extremely to the right, is that wise? Well, look, I respect what the Tea Party's doing. I mean, they're standing strong. I mean, this policy is bad. I'm going to continue to say that because most Americans think so. And I'm sorry, it really is connected to the debt and it is connected to the economy. And this is supposed to be the collective. Oh, you have all these young people buying in. I'll take care of the olders. And you said too earlier, Professor, about uh, this is not a sweeping law. Of course it is. I mean, I, I don't, you know, look, I was, I was a history major too, so I understand. I know my history a little bit and I understand the, the uh, you know, what FDR tried to do. But remember, too, that there have been some bad laws. Look, you say it's a law of the land, but it is a bad law. And we in our country and other countries have had bad laws. So it needs to be changed before it's cemented in. You say it's a law of the land. However, the president himself keeps changing things. Now, to go back to the Tea Party, look, back in the day, 1776, the patriots seemed to be like they were the rebels. Well, they were, you know, and it was the loyalists that would go along to get along. Look, I don't think we can go along to get along right now. I think our country, I don't want to be a socialist country. I want to be a republic. I think we're on the verge of changing that, and I don't want that. I don't want a liberal country. I don't want socialism, and I don't want to be like Europe, quite frankly. I want to be the United States of America. Okay, uh, Patricia, let's go. Let's There's stay with the absurdity of the right. Obama go. isn't anywhere close to being a socialist. He is a moderate, a middle kidding? of the really? road Democrat. Really? This is not Democrat. socialized medicine. And when you, you don't think this is socialism medicism. means it's not national. socialized medicine Do you know at all. where this health care plan means. originated? In the Heritage Foundation. This was the original plan okay, by the Heritage Foundation. Okay, it can originate there all day Foundation. long, but then it went to a thousand what pages of bad. It was a single payer fine, plan. Fine, but then it went to a thousand. No, I know where it came from. Socialist. But I mean, this is like the nugget. That's the start. It got way, way, way bigger, way worse, bloated. I mean, we don't want this health care. Americans don't want it. I don't know what polls you're looking at, but just pull them all up. People do not like right, Obamacare. They don't want it. Let's go to Patricia. Let's go to Patricia in Washington. Patricia, jump approve. in. Jump in, Patricia. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, re I'm really kind of astonished about how we can come to all of these conclusions without even having moved forward or having, you know, cr thought critically about what's going on. You, you know, you're making conclusions that this is going to be the end of America before it's even started. You know, this health care type of provision was quite successful in Massachusetts. I lived there for, a very, for a, you know, through my college and graduate school years, and um, it worked very well there. And it, it's not socialized medicine medicine at all. It's just the fact that somebody, again, buys health insurance coverage from Aetna or from Blue Cross Blue Shield or somewhere else, and it's managed by those companies. They just have to get it. That's all. And in fact, I think this is good for the economy because it actually gives a more, you know, a, a, a more, um, basically, it, it, you know, it provides a, a more competitive industry where, you know, being in New York, I was paying, nine, you know, $1,000 a month, and other places I pay less. And I mean, it's, it, it, no one's managing my health care other than these companies, and it certainly isn't the government. I just have the opportunity to buy it from private industry. Okay. Alan, let me go back no to Alan sense. here in Washington. You know, it still gets back to Obama, it seems to me. And, and this is a, he's a lightning rod for the right here. Why mm -hmm. does he have to keep battling things that were already accomplished in his first term? I, I don't understand that. It, it's, it really is hard to understand, and the American people don't understand it. 24% of the American people approve of what the Republicans are doing in Congress right now, this tactic that Didi is so strongly supportive of. Whatever you think of the Affordable Care Act, the American people don't want the Republicans to be doing this. And also, polls in competitive district shows that this has thrown almost every race against the the Republicans in competitive districts and may well cost them the House of Representatives. So you're right. How do you explain such a strategy that seems absolutely counterproductive? It is this irrational hatred. You heard it. He's a socialist, which is so ridiculous. We can argue pro and con the Affordable Care Act from now to the end of time, but it is not even close to socialism. It's not even close to what the liberals want that is Patricia so eloquently pointed 
pointed out. So there is, you're right, there is this blind belief that Obama is this communist, this socialist, he's not legitimate, he wasn't born in the United States, you name it. There is this belief on the part of a hard right that there is something illegitimate about Obama, and we're willing to abandon all our adherence to constitutional principles in order to oppose him. As long as that yeah, but, okay, exists, all right, let me then go to, obviously let me go to uh, this I mean, kind of okay, conflict is going to continue. Obama, how can vilifying Obama be a winning strategy for the Republican Party moving forward? I, I don't see the math out there. I don't understand the strategy. And it's all negative all the way through. I'll tell you the math. I mean, he's go in ahead. his 30s right now. His approval rating is alone. Lowest ever, and I think he's the worst president we've ever had in our country because we have this crushing debt. People are not happy with Obamacare. I mean, he totally botched Syria. I mean, over and over again. I mean, and then we have trillions and trillions of dollars of debt. I mean, these are problems. It seems like he just passes the buck. I mean, really, I, I don't know where you're all getting that Obama is popular and it's all about the Republicans. People are not happy with Washington, D.C. Look, granted, unlike you all, I will admit that the re there are people who are not happy with Republicans, they're not happy with Democrats. All I'm saying, is during this presidency, there's been more of a stalemate and problems than any other time, certainly with President Bush and President Clinton. Okay. You know, Patricia, I, I kind of like that, you know, passing the buck because Obama got stuck holding the bag here over because of what's been done for the last 50 years, 60 years in the United States, and he got That's caught fair. with it, okay? I don't see it as being different parties involved here. It's more a way of governing the economy and foreign policy, we haven't mentioned that uh, too much here, but it's just he got caught with it, and now hard decisions have to be made. Well, yeah, I mean, we've gone into debt because we've had two wars over the last 12 years, and one in Iraq and Afghanistan, in case we've forgotten about that. And that seems to have been forgotten by, you know, a lot of the Tea Party members that uh, who, who support that supported both of those wars that, that were in a lot of this debt crisis because of that. Trillions of dollars, and supported by none of our allies like the previous wars, which, you know, I think we should think beyond war. Um, and I think the international community understands that. And and I think, you know, speaking of foreign policy, I think the globe is is pretty shocked at what's happening here yeah. and the stalemate in our government. I mean, a Pakistani Absolutely. friend of mine even said recently, we've gone through coups and haven't had to deal with this kind of behavior. So, you know, I think we need to take a deep breath and start rationalizing. You're right. No one likes Washington, but Washington needs to get a grip and understand how it needs to serve the American people, not itself. And that's the bottom line. You know, Alan, that's a very good point because I think, you know, we, again, you can look at Republicans and Democrats, but I mean, there's just the process itself is breaking down. I mean, take people taking each other hostage. We, we hear this kind of language right now. I mean, this is very different than it was 30 or 40 years ago. We could reach a hand across the aisle. Now, this is this big stakes. And, you know, who's the biggest loser? The American people. You're absolutely right about that. And, you know, this kind of, you know, absurd rhetoric you hear from the right, he's a socialist, you know, he's responsible for all our debt. The biggest spender in history is not Barack Obama, it was George W. Bush. It wasn't just the wars. He, he's the biggest spender, the biggest bureaucracy builder in addition to the wars, and also deregulating, which created that economic crisis. So all, you know, we, we can debate these things, but to call Obama socialist, to have all this, you know, extreme rhetoric doesn't Help. Okay, I want but to be fair to everybody. More, I want to go to Didi. Broadly, you got the last 20 seconds. Last word, Didi. Go ahead. Yeah, that's good because it's good. the guy keeps calling names. That's all right. I'm just going to say that I really think it's good for us to uh, take a look at the issues. And, and now Congress and the Obama have forced to take a scalpel and take a look. I hope it works out. But I have to tell you, I think Republicans need to stand strong for what they believe in because we're the right ones okay. on this particular topic. We've Obama run out of time. Very bad I love discussions like this. I want to thank you all. Many thanks to my guests in Washington and in New York. And